and today we are going to check an easy solution to use macOS Apple operating system on any computer like if it was an app like I've got right over here macOS Sonoma really easy and simple and I will share with you all the steps necessary and if you are watching this video on Windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official OM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description it will get even even cheaper. And besides Windows 11 Pro, if you are looking for Windows 10 or even an office suit that we can aggregate directly to our Microsoft account, you can use the same coupon code, which will give you the best price possible at this moment. So just in case, the link will be down below. And now let's get started with this quick tutorial that will allow you in a few minutes to have macOS on any computer that you have. Now for that, we will need to download three files and you will be able to search all of them but I will leave them also down below on the video description just in case you want to click and go directly to the website. Now first of all we will need to download VMware Workstation Player and you can search for it but the link will be down below as well. Auto Unlocker will be the second tool that we need and it's a very small app from Polo Projects. You can also search for it. It's easy to find, but I will leave the link on the video description. Finally, we will need a macOS ISO image. And in this particular case, I will use the latest Sonoma version, but I will also leave the Catalina version ISO. If your PC doesn't perform as well, I would suggest to use the Catalina instead of Sonoma, which is a bit heavier on the hardware that we have but it's optional and you actually can make two virtual machines one with Sonoma and one with Catalina and another with another version of Mac OS and then test out the one that performs better in either case I would suggest if you have a internet connection that it's not great to have a download manager because these are big files. Once we have everything on our computer, in my particular case, I placed everything on the desktop so that it's easier to record this screen and show everything to you. We need to install VMware Workstation, which is really easy. Just install like any other app. But in my particular case, it was already installed. We have done quite a few videos here with VMware. Next, before we open any software, we will need to unzip the auto unlocker folder that we downloaded. Open it and run the file. We just need to simply right click and select run as administrator. Then we will click on where it says patch to unlock the macOS installation. When it's done, it will show a success message on the screen. Now we can close everything and open VMware Workstation Player. If it's your first time using it, it will be completely empty. In my particular case, you can see that I already have two virtual Windows machines right over there, but the process is exactly the same. We just need to select Create New Virtual Machine, where it says the installation disk option, we will choose the macOS Sonoma or Catalina, depending on the download that we did. And then in the next step, we will choose Apple Mac. OS. And if we did not run the auto unlocker, this option would not appear. So if anything goes wrong with the installation with the patch, this option does not appear. In your case, if you did everything as you have seen, it worked great and you will have the option Apple Mac OS. In the Mac OS version, if we are installing Sonoma, we will choose 14. And if we are with Catalina, we can choose 10.15. Then we choose the name of our virtual machine, it's completely optional, and we will also choose the disk size. For Sonoma, the recommended size on VMware is 80 gigs, we can increase that, and for Catalina is 40 gigs, but we can also choose a larger size if we prefer. We can choose the option single file or multiple file, it doesn't make any difference in terms of functionality. And next, we will modify the hardware according to our system to have a better experience. In my particular case, I did select 16 gigabytes of RAM and 6 CPU cores, and the rest you can leave as it is and click on 
finish and our virtual machine is ready but we need to prepare one more thing if we are using Sonoma and for Catalina we don't need but I would suggest if you are using Catalina don't miss this part so that you don't lose the line of guide so what we will need to do if we are using Sonoma we just need to go to edit the hardware options of the virtual machine then select the disk and we will have an address right over there we can copy and just place in to Explorer or we can, as I did, navigate to the location listed there, which is really easy. It's on the documents, so it's really easy to go there like I did old fashioned. Now within that folder, there is a configuration file. It's called exactly virtual machine configuration and it has the name of our disk that we created. We will right click and select edit with notepad. Then we will scroll to the end and create a new line by pressing enter and typing smc.version space equal space open dash zero close dash and that is it. Now we will save the document and close that window. Then we click OK on the virtual machine and now we can click on play virtual machine to boot our Mac OS. Now from this moment on we are in the normal Mac OS installation. However, there is one or two things that we will need to check out at the end of the installation. So if this is the first time that you are using Mac OS, I will be here guiding you through all the process. If you have used Apple machines before, then you know the process. You can scroll to the end of the video. Probably there will be timestamps right over there. Now, after the initial Apple logo, there will be a screen appearing where we can choose our language. I did choose English, but if you have any other language of your preference, you just need to select that language. In the next menu, we will choose Disk Utility and select our VMware Virtual Disk. In this example, it's 85.9 gigs and this will depend on what you have chosen. Let's click on Erase and choose a name for our disk. It's completely optional and then it will erase and format the disk. At this moment, we will close this window and select Install Mac OS. Let's press continue, agree to the license agreement, choose the disk, which in this particular case, it's the only one we have, click continue. And now we will wait for the installation, which takes about 30 minutes or so. So just grab a glass of water, eat a piece of fruit, something like that. And in 30 minutes, you can come back. Now, what we will find is a screen to select our country or region. In my case, I live in Portugal, so that's what I did select. Then click on continue, continue, and the accessibility options can be addressed later if needed. So let's press continue. For the migration assistant, choose not now. Creating an Apple ID it can be also done later. Then we accept the terms and conditions. And we will need to create an account with our name and password so that we can access this computer. Press continue and choose your preference for the location services. Next, we will need to select our time zone and then choose between the dark or light mode for the team. But remember that we can change this later on as well. Now we will enter the desktop. But although the machine is ready to start using it, there are two things that we need to adjust dress so that we have a better experience. The first thing is to go to our desktop and you will see a installation disk, which is our ISO image that we downloaded. Just right click and select eject. Once we have ejected the disk, we will go to player, then manage and select install VMware tools. There will be a menu that appears. We just need to double click to install, then click next, next again. It will ask for permission to open, click OK. And in one of the prompts, and it will ask us to open system preferences to allow the opening of VMware tools. And we will say yes to allow. Now I did accidentally click on the restart button, but don't worry if you do the same, uh, you don't need to restart. Uh, we just need to do the installation once again. But, but as we have given permissions, we just need to double click and it will do all the installation in about one minute or so. And you will see the installation process and eventually there will be a success message. Once that message appears, the installation of VMware tools is ready and we can restart our 
virtual machine. And once we restart, it will have all the drivers installed and we can even use it in full screen mode on our Windows computer. So it's as simple as this. Now the performance will depend on the computer that we have. On my testings on the machines that I've tested, uh, my difficulty is always on the graphic side because the CPU will be awesome. The disk speed SSD will be awesome as well. RAM, I do have 16 gigabytes at this moment just for the virtual machine. But if you are planning to use games or high demanding graphic apps, then this is not the option to go. Nonetheless, to test out some apps out of curiosity, if you don't have an Apple computer and you want to test out, this is a really fun and easy way to use macOS. And hopefully you will have fun using it on your computer. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way. And if it was, don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you on the next one.